It's a beautiful sunny day in South Shields and today I'm going to show you how I put this ceiling into this van. The ceiling is made in one piece in the workshop and then installed in the van and I'm going to show you exactly how I did that. To make a ceiling like that we need a plan first of all and I have one. This is it here I'll show you a little bit more about that in a moment. The materials I'm going to use for this are very simple um, pine cladding which I'm going to lacquer, put lights in this type of thing and this will be a sort of floating ceiling um, I don't want a big gap between it and the ceiling itself but it will be a sort of a floating ceiling and um, this is how we're going to make it the thing itself is going to be 120 millimeters wide uh, 224 2224 millimeters long uh, we've got various places for the lights marked out and the way I'm going to make this is I'm going to glue it all together in the workshop with some cross battens on it at the same place that the ceiling battens are. So we can screw through these into the ceiling battens and put it up in one. That's the general idea. Now, first of all, we want how many of these pieces of cladding do we actually need? And we know that the face length of these, uh, obviously it's written on the pack that they're 94 centimetres wide. Uh, but there's a tongue and a groove to take into account there. And when you take that into account, it ends up at 88 millimetres. So if we do a 1,200 millimetres and divide that by 88, that tells us that we're on 13.6 of these. So I'm going to cut 14 and see what width we have. This is not essential. I mean, if it's a little bit more on either side, that would make it about, I don't know, 2 one and a half centimetres wider on each side if we just went with the straight cuts. Um, we'll see how that looks and if we need to trim a couple of these down we can do that also. So first thing we want 14 um, of these at uh, 2240. So we have the saw set up, I put a stop on it here um, so we don't have to measure each one of these and we know that they will be exactly the same. And the idea is we just want to cut these through. I'm going to save these pieces um, because I can make the doors for the furniture in this van out of these, which will be another video, but uh, I'll show you how I do that later. Okay, so now we have 14 of these cut at the appropriate length, and I also have six of these, which are going to be the cross members, which go on the back of it, to hold it all together. Um, that's not all which is going to hold it together. I'm going to put a line of glue along the tongue on these, push them together, then glue that to the back and put a couple of brads through on each um, slat, so to speak. I've also, on this, I've marked <coughs> where the ceiling battens are, uh, the six of them, and we're going to have one of these on each of the ceiling battens. So that when this, and this is face down, by the way, this is already face down. So when that goes into the ceiling, what we'll do is we'll screw through that, through this, into the ceiling button. And that will be six um, across the six of the buttons. And I think that will be fine. It's a little bit experimental. I haven't made a ceiling like this before. Um, but let's get on with it and see what happens. All right, so just to show you how I'm continuing along here, uh, we've got a bit of glue just on the tongue there. And then these want to be glued underneath. I found the best way to do that is if we just put a bit of glue on the top of them, like so. And then with that all glued up, and the brad gun ready to go, we can slide this under here. Just got to be a little bit careful that you don't pull out uh, this one so you can't lift it up too much just now so if we slide that like that and then let's have a look we'll just lift that whole thing up slide that into place and the tongue should just slide in there nicely all good and obviously keeping an eye, keeping an eye on just keeping it all square down this side. 
Right, so now that that's in place, again, just a few more brads to hold it whilst the glue is setting. And there it is. Um, 14 of them down that way. We've got our six cross struts on for the, um, for the ceiling battens. This is the front. So we want to mark the places where the lights are going to go, radius the corners, and then clean it up and give it a coat of lacquer. Okay, so marking out for the lights, um, you may remember on a plan earlier we had them 200 from the top. Uh, I've now made that 250. Just like them a little bit further down the start of the board. So that's 250 and 250 in. Um, same on these ones. But this third one is slightly different to take into account the cupboard, which is going in the van. So I'll get on with marking these. These are 250 from the top, which is here, and 250 in, which is there. I don't have the lights yet, so I'm just going to drill pilot holes through these until I get the lights so that we'll cut them the exact um, shape. Okay, now I've flipped this over and it's all looking good. But one of the themes with the decor of this van is going to be the radius corner. So, with this highly precision instrument, we're going to draw a radius on these corners and I'm going to cut all them up. With those done we're just going to give the whole thing a good sanding take these rough edges off and then a couple of coats of lacquer okay so having sanded all that radius the corners it's all glued together it seems to be okay it's moving in one piece it's not coming apart once the glue is properly set i'm sure that'll be absolutely fine now i'm using this uh, man's what they call it is bar top lacquer very strong lacquer um, this is a matte uh, finish and what I'm going to do right now is just give it a sealing coat uh, then we'll knock it back down with some fine grit sandpaper and then we'll give it another coat after that and we'll see how that looks. It should go a little bit darker than this, a little bit sort of honey coloured when, um, when it's finished. I have used this stuff on a lot of different projects and I find it very good. Um, again, I'm not sponsored by them. This isn't an ad for the people. Uh, but I've just found it to be a good product. So anyone else who's doing a similar thing and is wondering what sort of lacquer is good, I'm saying this stuff's okay. It's quite expensive, but um, it is very tough, very strong. So I'm just going to get on with this. I'll give it this coat. Let that dry, and obviously we want a good sealing on the end grain here as well, um, like so. Right, this has had two coats of lacquer, and I've knocked that back down with a very fine grit paper. I do believe this is a 320 grit paper, and that's really just to take any uh, little burrs and things off the lacquer itself. Now, I managed to find this old light uh, from another van, and I think this hole saw is more or less it. We might have to do a little bit of on the edges with a rasp or something like that, but this is good enough to be getting on with. So what I'm going to do is drill these light holes out, then we've got one more thing to do, and then we can attempt to get this into the van. Okay, so lastly, before we uh, before we put this in the van, I've made this template with screw holes, which will coincide with the battens in the van. So that would go like that. Sorry, it would go like that. <laughs> and these holes, if we're very precise with this, will 
hit the battens in the van as we go in. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do maybe every third one um, with a line of screws. That'll be sufficient to hold it. If it needs more, we can put more in once it's in the van. But I'm just going to drill these and countersink them first. So that as soon as we get this up on the ceiling, we can start screwing it in. All right, so in the van we've got well, yeah, these um, extending poles to hold it up. And we've got some scrap wood there just to span across the whole thing. Uh, we've got the drill, we've got a measure, and we've got some screws and something to kneel on. And I think that should be all right. Okay, take one. Uh, what I'm going to try to do here is get it like this, put it like that, slide the pole under it. See if that works. reasonable. I want some fine adjustment here though. I've gotten that majorly in. There's now just a couple of other things to do with it. I want to make sure that it's positioned correctly, uh, equidistant here, and I want to make sure it's positioned correctly this way also, which it isn't right now. Um, I believe here we have 150. That's from, where are we going to take this from? We'll take that from the inner from this beam here, 150. If we take the same from that beam there, it's 210. So the difference there is six, so it wants to go three centimeters that way. And it's in fairly tight there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put another support in and then I'll just slacken that one off a little so that we have room to move it. Looking better. Right, here we now have 180. And here we now have just under 180. So it's about there. Now, we want to know that we're hitting this button. I'm going to test that just by putting the screw through it, see if it gets a bite on something. And if it does, then we'll know we're pretty much positioned correctly this way also. That's got it. So, so far so good, looking good. Let's check from the back door, we've got 110 there. I've got a little bit difference there. So it possibly wants to go that way just a touch from the front. Um, so I'll check the measurements at the front, see if it wants to go that way, and then we're nearly there. So what I'll do is, um, I'll just move that over until that's about at the 180 mark. 180, 180, and 180. Right, so I'm going to put some screws in. See how it all looks, see if I can fish these other uh, lightning loops out. And then we'll finish it off with all of the screws, see if that's secure. Which I think it will be. And as I say, if we've got this measurement correct, then these screw holes should be on the button. And yes, they are. put 
this one in and it can take whoop, that one nearly got me. Well that wasn't so bad. Um, I thought it would be a bit more difficult to get it in there in one piece. Um, but I think having everything prepped up first and having some sort of rough plan as to how this was going to go, that helped a lot. So the ceiling is in place and I do like it. Um, I think it's looking good. I like these radius corners and the contrast here. Um, if you would like to see how the rest of this van turns out, uh, please do consider subscribing to the channel. And if you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. It always helps. And I think the very next thing that we're going to video in this van is possibly the cabinet building, which is going down this side. Um, I'm going to do this differently to how I've done in the past. I don't like to repeat myself with the videos, so obviously I've already insulated this, panelled it and carpeted it. And I have videos which um, show me doing that, if you would like to watch them. So, thank you very much for watching. And as I say, the next one in this series, I think we'll be getting on with the uh, cabinet making. So, thanks very much.